The purpose of this video is to provide an introduction and overview of cytokines and chemokines. Because cytokines and chemokines play such an important role in all parts of the immune response, this presentation will focus on all five major themes of this course. Now, at the end of this presentation, you should be able to describe the major roles of cytokines and chemokines in the immune system. You should be able to describe the three major modes by which cytokines and chemokines act on cells and describe the major families, structural or functional families, of cytokines and chemokines. What are cytokines and chemokines? These are small proteins that bind to specific receptors on target cells. As shown here to the, to the left, uh, the example of interleukin-7, binding to receptor chains that are in the membrane sending signals to intracellular signaling molecules that ultimately lead to changes in gene transcription. This is how cytokines and chemokines work. They change cell behavior by altering the function of proteins in the cell and by changing the expression of specific genes in the cell. Different cytokines have differing effects on cells. Some of these effects oppose one another. Some cytokines turn responses up, and some cytokines turn responses down. So what's the difference between cytokines and chemokines? Well, cytokines direct the growth, development, maturation, activation, and the lifespan of immune cells. Whereas chemokines, which were called chemokines because they're chemotactic cytokines, they direct the movement of white blood cells in the body. It, these chemokines tell white blood cells where they should go. The expression of cytokines and chemokines and their receptors is highly regulated in the immune system, and some cytokines and some receptors are expressed on T cells and some on B cells, but they're not necessarily the same ones, and depending on the type that are expressed on, on the different types of cells, that dictates how the cells respond to these various signals. Now, cytokines and chemokines have three major mechanisms of action. So, to the left, you see, again, the, the mechanism that they're following an activating stimulus. A cell is able to make cytokines. Those cytokines are secreted, and they act on a receptor that is present on a cell, on a target cell. These, uh, when, when the cytokines act on that receptor, they send signals inside the cell to change the function of proteins and regulate gene transcription, and that leads to biological effects. Now, the three modes of action of cytokines are, number one, autocrine. That's where a cell gets activated, it secretes cytokine, and that cytokine feeds back on the same cell to stimulate itself. The second mode of action is paracrine action, where the acti an activated cell makes cytokine that um, goes out and activates a nearby cell. And the third mode of action is endocrine action, where the, uh, the activated cell makes cytokine that gets secreted into the circulation, and that may activate a cell that's far away from the cell that's actually making the cytokine. So these three modes of action, autocrine, paracrine, and endocrine, are all utilized by immune cells uh, as they secrete cytokines and chemokines uh, to increase or change their, uh, their function. So, there's a couple of ways to group cytokines and to think about them. One way that people lump cytokines together is by structural grouping. And as you can see on the left-hand side, these are the structural groups of cytokines. Interferons, tumor necrosis factor family, interleukins, transforming uh, growth factor beta family, colony stimulating factors, etc. On the right-hand side are the chemokine families, the C, the CC, CXC, CX3C chemokines. They're named this way because of their structural similarities that are shown at the bottom. For me, I have difficulty remembering the cytokines and chemokines based on their structures, and it's much easier to remember them based on a functional grouping approach. So, in terms of the functional grouping in, of cytokines, you can think of them in three major groups. Cytokines that mediate and regulate innate immunity, things like interleukin-1, tumor necrosis factor, IL-6, these are, these are cytokines that act on endothelial cells or leukocytes to stimulate early uh, and innate immune responses. The second functional group are cytokines that mediate 
uh, or regulate adaptive immune responses. These are things like interleukin-2, interleukin-4, interleukin-5, transforming growth factor beta. These, these are cytokines that cause lymphocytes to grow and develop, stimulate them to generate adaptive immune responses and to make immunologic memory. The third group of cytokines uh, that is a functional group are those cytokines that stimulate hematopoiesis. These are things like stem cell factor, interleukin-7, uh, GM-CSF. These are cytokines that act on the bone marrow to stimulate the growth and differentiation of leukocytes and lymphocytes. You can do the same for chemokines. And the three major groups of chemokines uh, that we talk about are homeostatic chemokines. These are chemokines that control the migration of cells during normal development and maintenance, normal functioning of the immune system. The second functional group of chemokines are the inflammatory chemokines, which are chemokines that are produced in response to infection or injury. And they direct the migration of leukocytes uh, into infected tissues or damaged tissues. These inflammatory cytokines are not typically made at baseline. They're induced to be expressed when there's either infection or tissue damage, and they cause the cells to migrate into these sites. The last functional grouping of chemokines are the angiogenic chemokines. There are some chemokines that promote the growth of blood vessels and some chemokines that prevent the growth of blood vessels. Those that promote the growth of blood vessels are called proangiogenic chemokines, and those that prevent the development of blood vessels are called anti-angiogenic chemokines. Now, let's talk about some specific cytokine families that you're going to be hearing about. First of all, the interferons. The interferons are a very large family of cytokines. More than 20 different interferons have been identified in humans. The ones that you need to be most concerned about and that you'll hear most about are the type 1 interferons. These are interferon alpha and beta, and the type 2 interferon, interferon gamma. These, are, these interferons are made by a variety of cell types, and the type 1 interferons play a particularly important role in viral infections. They're made by a lar large variety of cell types when they become infected with viruses. Interferon gamma plays a major role in immune responses uh, to things like bacteria, viruses, and other intracellular pathogens. And interferon gamma is also produced by a number of cells and plays a major role. Both of these cytokines are used therapeutically to treat patients who have certain types of chronic viral or mycobacterial infections, and you may be hearing about them again. The tumor necrosis superfamily of cytokines, this again is a large superfamily of cytokines with 19 different cytokine ligands and 29 different receptors that have been identified in humans. They play major roles in immune cell activation, particularly innate immune responses, in immune cell differentiation, and in growth and death of immune cells. TNF-alpha is the major player in this group that you will likely hear about. It is a major inflammatory cytokine that initiates immune responses and inflammation very potently. And blockade of tumor necrosis factor alpha is a major therapeutic target in autoimmune and inflammatory disorders. The interleukins are also a large family of cytokines. There are now more than 35 different interleukins that have been identified in humans. Um, the original description of interleukins were that they were made by one white blood cell, and they regulated the function of other immune cells. So they were, they were called interleukines, and this was how the name was derived. Now, these play many, many roles in the growth and development of lymphocytes and in the activation of uh, cells of the innate immune system. Uh, interleukins such as interleukin-1 that's involved in inflammation, interleukin-2, which is in a, a major T-cell growth factor, interleukin-4, which is a major B-cell growth factor, Interleukin-5 for eosinophil growth, interleukin-15 for NK cell growth, and interleukin-10 that regulates the immune system uh, are major players in immune responses. And you will hear about these again and again as we discuss the immune system. Lastly, I wanted to talk about the colony stimulating factor family of cytokines. These are cytokines that act on stem cells in the bone marrow to stimulate growth and differentiation into specific types of blood cells. And among these colony stimulating factors are things such as macrophage colony stimulating factor and granulocyte macrophage colony stimulating factor. The key takeaway points for this video are that cytokines direct the growth development, maturation, activation, and lifespan of immune cells, that 
Chemokines direct the migration of white blood cells within the body into and out of tissues. That cytokines and chemokines are divided into structural or functional families. That cytokines and chemokines bind to specific receptors and they send signals into responsive cells, altering protein function and changing gene transcription. And lastly, that there are three modes of cytokine act action, autocrine, paracrine, and endocrine.